Are soccer market values accurate? What are they for? Are they actually used by the club when determining a transfer fee? Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo and welcome to Tactical Manage TV. And today we're going to dive into soccer market values, which have been a topic of a lot of controversy every time there's an update at TransferMark and even some conspiracy theories. For today's episode, I will be bringing Manuel Faith, the area manager for TransferMark in North America. He also covers Bundesliga for Forbes. We do as well have a podcast together. Link is on description with Rabona TV and Josh from JD TV called The Unsackable Podcast. So give it a listen. You might enjoy it. Or even if you hate it, go give it a listen as well. In this video, he's going to explain how TransferMark determines the market values of players, how TransferMark works as a company, and even tell us how clubs very often use the website, including it played a role on a pretty big transfer that Toronto FC just made that you might have heard of the player. But again, Insigne is not related to me. I think. With that said, he will also be discussing how the market values in TransferMark can be used to predict future outcomes of games and tournaments, sometimes even beating the Las Vegas odds, and how the MLS market value differs for this specific model. So sit back, relax, hit the like button if you haven't already, subscribe if you enjoy this type of content as well, and it's time for some tactical economics. All right, Manuel, a uh, cold morning in Canada. How you doing, Manuel? Yeah, I'm doing good. Um, an early morning as well, but I guess we're both um, in tons of meetings today. And so we had to schedule this, I think, as early as possible. <laughs> yeah. And I think this is a very important topic to bring upon, right? Often in the channel, I just talk about players' performances, what's happening, news mm -hmm. related to like soccer in the field. And then yeah. from time to time, we see a market value update or something happen. And then you see outrage from a few. Some very happy with it yeah. and people start questioning it. So I think today's a good episode to clarify how it works. So regardless of one's belief, if his favorite player is worth twice of what TransferMark put there, mm -hmm. this is going to be a great way to show them why that value is there. Whether it's right or wrong, that's something else. But we're going to explain that. Also, if actually, it's really interesting that you bring up the outrage. Um, if you're outraged, you're not alone. <laughs> it's not just your nationality or your own feeling. We get lots every time we do an update, whether it's in Germany, France, Italy, the Netherlands or Belgium, we get complaints. Um, that's just how it is. And I guess if you don't think if you don't do things right, you won't get complaints. It's just, you know, it's someone is always going to be unhappy in one I way mean, or another. <laughs> people people will complain and I complain about things as well. So I, I, yeah. I totally understand it. But the one nature thing, of before we start, one thing to say to everyone, I'm putting the link on the description, not just mm -hmm. by following Manuel on Twitter as well. Uh, and I am already going to do the introduction for you before this part of the video comes up. We do have a podcast named Unsackable Podcast. I'm putting the link on the description. It's me, Manuel, Adrian from Rabona TV and Josh from JD TV. It's a great podcast, very diverse mm -hmm. in opinions because you have guys that follow different leagues. I, You guys know I follow CONCACAF and South America and some of Europe. Manuel has a lot of expertise in Europe and North America here. Uh, Josh, very good with um, Canada and with Borussia Dortmund. And Adrian is kind of like spread thin all over the world of soccer. So go check out that podcast. And while you're at it, leave a review. But Manuel, let's get to the episode. Let's get to yeah, the episode. Let's do it. The first thing I want to talk about, and I'm going to give you the mic and you're going to talk for as long as you want, is yeah. how are market values calculated how does it work in transfer mark specifically um the short version is i just like roll a dice and make something up no i'm kidding <laughs> um it's it's actually you know it's, so it's not science we don't use an algorithm um if you want an algorithm go to ciees um, and you can see it's a you know, desk at 120 million euros um, I think that's that's all you need to know about using algorithms. Sounds fair uh, to me. <laughs> in market values. Um, no, we use something called a hive mind. And um, a hive mind or, you know, the collective thought. Um, we have about 2 million registered users at TransferMarkt. Um, so, by the way, if you, if you want to register, I, I know in, in North America, the community isn't quite as active yet as it is in other countries. You can create a, an account tomorrow and become involved um for free 
for free yeah, yeah absolutely for free um you can become involved in all sorts of things you can input data and of course you know that means and you're not going to be just be able to work on the system input data and do whatever you want that's not how it works exactly but you can suggest uh, data corrections and then people like me will go over it and actually ensure that it's right and then accept it or not and it's similar with market values uh, at the end of the day the market values are decided by lots of different people you know with lots of different backgrounds and at the end of the day, I'm just the final person who, are, who accepts them or not, and sometimes maybe makes adjustments depending on how I feel about them. Now, I don't make market values for all the leagues in the world. I, I have a specific area of expertise, which is in this case, I do Major League Soccer, the Canadian Premier League, and uh, USL, right? Because one of the things that, of course, was pointed out many times is that I'm in charge of doing market values for Mexicans. No, um, Liga MX is done by Mexicans. There's a group of Mexicans who sit in Mexico, who do the market values in Mexico. So let's clear up that misconception right there. It's the same for you know the Netherlands, for Belgium, Brazil. We have a market value team in Brazil. Um, so clear up that misconception. So I also not in charge of Mexicans in Italy. We have a team in Italy. You know, actually a very competent team in Italy, same in the case in Spain and so on and so on. You know, so we have regional offices that deal with with regional market values um, after, you know, input from the community. And that's how it essentially works. And do I make adjustments depending on how I feel about a certain market value? Do I go up and down? Yeah, there's me and another couple of people who will go through them at the end of the day and then make a decision based on that. But in the end of the day, it's a hive mind. And that's the idea behind it. And there's lots of studies out there that suggest that the hive mind does a lot better job than an artificial intelligence, an AI, right? Um, and those studies have been backed up. That has like our market values have been up and backed up by a ton of studies. I think we're like 0.9 within 0.9 of actual transfer fees. Um, and transfer fees are very different than market values. I think we'll get to that later. Um, but we're usually quite close. In, in our market value determination and um yeah i think that is it is in a nutshell but yeah i have to also point out that people come and complain and don't and tell us that they don't understand how market values work and how we come to the numbers uh, by the way we have a disclaimer under every market value update text so maybe you should read the text and um you know actually it's all on the page you know you can't really say it's not transparent because it's on there you can go on the market value update. For example, there's one for Qatar on there right now on transfermarkt.us. You scroll to the very bottom. There's a little disclaimer and with a link that sends you to a page where it's in, explained completely in depth of how we get to the numbers that we have. Mm -hmm. Now, one question before we move on to market value and transfer fee, because I think that's what people get very often confused. The market mm -hmm. value... I, I, We'll talk about that. I almost see it like a base. The transfer fee, there's so many more variables that go to it in a negotiation. Mm. And sometimes teams do overpay, by the way. Um, we yeah. can even address one recent that Americans will be familiar with. Mm. But one question, when it comes to market value, and I'm not saying that you or anyone in transfer mark has a bias, but uh, a player's nationality will play a role. Do you agree with that? It, it would, right? Technically. No, I wouldn't say it's the nationality. No. I think it's the market that they're in. Market that they're in. Yeah. Um, Premier League is a great example. Mm -hmm. Although, um, when you actually look at the latest Premier League update, and I shared that in we we're, were in a chat for the Unsackable podcast, and I shared that number and for the, for the Premier League market value update. Um, it included a graph that showed that Premier League, by and large, I think any all the clubs that won lost in squad value because we had to adjust market values downward, right? Um, but yeah, because the market is very strong in the league and television, they have more television money than um, than any other league in, in Europe. So the other European leagues know this, right? They're not idiots. Um, <laughs> they say, <laughs> okay, well, get X amount of money from television deals. Um, you want our player, you know, if a team from Serie A comes, they say, okay, this is the price for you. And when a team from Premier League comes, this is the price for you. Um, so accordingly, market values are co adjusted accordingly. I mean, just look, um, Newcastle paid 30 million euros today for for FC Barnsley striker Wood, right? And like you don't see that kind of deal anywhere else in Europe. So um, our market values don't determine whether a player is good or not. It just determines 
how much a player would cost in that particular market. And so, yes, Premier League players tend to be more expensive. I've um, noticed that with the Brazilian market quite often, right? You go to the Brazilian market, if it's a player that's U23 or U22, a prospect, the yeah. price of the player is just jacked up so much yeah. when he's young in Brazil because I believe uh, European clubs are willing to pay more because of that expectation of the next Ronaldinho, the next Neymar, Correct. and they pay more. And I've noticed that their prices can drop later on. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also have noticed that in Brazil, when a player si is signed by another Brazilian club, they'll pay like $10 million. But if it's some a club from Europe in the Premier League, they'll sell that same player at the same age for 40 yeah. 50 something crazy absurd because Europeans in general, not just the Premier League, we see it a lot in La Liga, are willing to pay more. So yeah. that brings me to, well, since we talked about this transfer fee too, I think what people get very often confused is, and I know the one Manuel was talking about was the transfer market update, transfer market value update of, for example, Johan Vasquez, right? Which mm. his value went down for very reasonable reasons. One of them being that the club that signed him paid less for him than what the market value was. That's a yeah. pretty big reason right away. What I and want there's, to there's other reasons as well. I mean, market values in Italy went down throughout the board mm -hmm. for everyone. Um, again, this is a market value adjustment due to COVID. Teams in Italy are not willing to pay as much money. Mm -hmm. Listen, and I think if you did a little bit of research and went through every market value in Italy, rather than just going on Twitter and shouting about it, you would have seen that Vasquez wasn't alone. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, the, their complaint was that, for example, Busio went up. But then Busio's market value, they paid more for him. And he's 19. And he's also ahead of his team. There's so yeah. many variables. Yeah. So but anyhow. With, with Busio too, um, he went for exactly the fee that I had him at his market value. Mm -hmm. Pretty much exactly. And he has been performing very well since. And so, you know, a 19-year-old was performing very well in Serie A. It just happens to be that that means his market value will go up. And there is reasons too that his market value is going up because... You know, there's lots of things that go into it. We're not dummies. We know about transfers before anyone else does sometimes, and we can't report on them. But that data flows into into um, our, our evaluations. So if we say, okay, this guy, there's clubs willing to pay X amount of money for him, sometimes that will flow into the data. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that's the case at Busio's, in Busio's example, but it might be. You know? Which... It's good that you brought that up real quick before we go back to the focus of this video. Ricardo Pepe, we had reported and Manuel was one of them with Transmark that reported that he was going to Wolfsburg. So the Wolfsburg deal was pretty much done at that point. And, and Manuel just reports based off what he's told. Uh, he's not the one buying Ricardo Pepe or doing the deals for Wolfsburg. The reason I Augsburg <laughs> paid what they paid, the reason the fee was so high, and to be honest, they overpaid for Pepe, if we're going to be honest. Many people agree with that. It's because they had to kind of like hijack him from a club of a deal that was pretty much done. So they had to pay mm -hmm. substantially more to just convince, hey, want to sign with us? That's what happened with Ricardo Pepe. Yeah. And obviously he had other offers as well in interest. But back to this one, um, Manuel, since we talked about, just so people understand very quickly, I know the difference, but and I think most of the viewers here know too, but yeah. market value, transfer fee, different things. Yes, absolutely. They're very different. I mean, the transfer fee can impact the market value. Um, give you a really good example. Anyone who works in real estate knows this, right? So... Um, in our neighborhood, for example, let's, let's take our neighborhood. Um, we live here on the water, very nice. And um, we are not really looking into selling our house, right? But there's, there's going to be a justice that will look at the value of the house based on what a house has sold for in the neighborhood, right? So um, someone down the street sells his house, let's say for 1.5 million then they will say, okay, well, then the houses in the neighborhood will be all about the same, right? Mm -hmm. But then um, that doesn't mean that our house will be sold for that price. A price, uh, a, a fee, like a fee is different than a, an, a, an approximation of what the, what the fee will be. A market value is an approximation of what that person might cost in an open market, right? 
Um, so yeah, a fee and a market value is very different. And we have both that data, if it's available, if you can find out, it takes us a lot of research, a lot of phone calls and a lot of, you know, to actually find the fees and fees do not, that we display do often not include bonuses because they're mm -hmm. separate and they're really hard to find out when bonuses are triggered. It's very, very difficult, right? So yeah, fees and market values are very different, but fees can determine a market value. If that makes sense. It makes sense. And just to add to what you said is the house is worth 1.5 million. If you are broke and you need to sell, someone can show up and say, hey, man, I'll pay 1 million. And you're just like, I need the money. I'll sell yeah. it. Or if you're very, if you're fine financially and you don't want to sell it, someone goes, hey, 1.5. You're like, dude, I don't want to sell it. So you're going to have yeah. to at least pay me over 2 million for me to consider selling it. And that happens all the time, right? Yeah. I mean, there's very good examples. Um, again, we have, we get mail in our in our mailbox all the time. It's like people, like investors are looking at your property. Well, we're not selling, but mm -hmm. people do it. And um, so in that case, you're not going to sell below market value. You'll be a fool to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So this happens all the time. And then, of course, um, our market value is to also not take into concern length of contract, which is very important as well, right? We, we base our market value. We pretend that every player has a three-year contract. Mm. right um so where we get often where our numbers get skewed while we're not like one of the reasons why we're 0.9 and not one in terms of accuracy is because a lot of players go for free transfers mm -hmm. but we don't take that into account or um like today i saw i think tecatito is close to signing for sevilla for like three million euros he's not worth three million euros but his contract mm -hmm. expires so porto wants to get the money and they'll exactly. sell him for much less. But he's if in normal circumstances, he would be worth much closer to his actual yeah. transfer market value, which I think it's close to 30 million. He's probably between 30 yeah. to 20 to 30 at least. M Matthias Ginter and Zakaria are good examples as well. Mm -hmm. Klappach might very well choose to sell them this winter before they walk for free. So that's when they're desperate. They they have an, they have, yes, they know their the player's market values are somewhere around 30 million, but they're not gonna get that from a player whose contract is going to expire in six months. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are those are the kind of examples where we get dinked because we don't care about their contract status. If we would, I mean, the thing is we only adjust our market values three times a year. Could you imagine how much we would have to adjust? It's, it's not like huge. the stock market, right? The stock market yeah. every day. I think we talked about it before our last podcast. There's 970,000 players in our data database. It takes a lot of man hours to keep that up to date. We can't just do the stock market thing and just, you know, have it go up and down all the time. That'd be crazy. I mean, we put every, every data point in by hand <laughs> and that's, it's just not possible to react to those kind of things. And that's why, you know, we're sometimes off. And Manu, one, one thing too, Toronto FC signed a, a bit of an important player recently, mm. kind of important, right? I think he won the yeah. Euros with Italy. He's pretty, he's yeah, okay. Pretty he's okay. <laughs> so I heard that they used Transfermark to do the signing a little bit. Can you talk about that real quick? Just for, because before you talk about that, yeah. I want you to quickly talk about that and talk about how clubs, official clubs actually use Transfermark before a random dude on Twitter says that it's not a reliable website. I just want you to mention how clubs use it mm. so that the dude on Twitter that doesn't think it's reliable can see that clubs actually use it. Yeah, again, we have 970,000 players on our database and um, you we have various filter options um, so that you can say, I need a player of that nationality in that age group at that price, approximate price, right? And yeah, you can go out there and say, oh, market values are not credible. Sure. We don't pretend that they are, but the truth of the matter is that clubs look at them <laughs> and use them as a ballpark figure. And if you don't like that, that's fine. But that's the reality. That's the truth. And anyone, you know, I talk to professional players and sporting directors and all sorts of things, and they all say the same thing. If a player or a sporting director tells you that they don't use transfer mark, they're lying. You know, they will say that in public. Bill Manning just said what everyone knew anyways. And I should send him a bouquet of flowers because that was the best advertisement we had in a long time. You what know, did he, he say talked, exactly? Uh, he said he went to um, Transfermarkt, looked at, he wanted to sign an Italian. He went to Transfermarkt. Um, he looked at the Italian national team and then just looked who was out of contract next summer. 
And who was and, it? Yeah, and then he found Insignia. But you know what? This happens all the time. You know, I know so many clubs. The other day, I published a statistic uh, with young Americans and their market value. And <laughs> I kid you not, within like a few minutes later, my text, my phone rang and I uh, had like a few sporting directors on there. It's like, how did you like, how did you filter the statistic that it looked like that? You know, that's just, they, they do use it, it, they use it as a database then essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course they do their own scouting and yeah. they look into it, but why wouldn't you? And I can tell you, we have um, a scouting tool, Scoutastic, um, that a lot of clubs use, you know, there's, when you, when you go on that homepage, um, I use it all the time and Scoutastic is a hundred percent based on the transfer mark database because you can go into, into the, into the tool. Um, and then you can, the, the, the tool has all the players in the database already because it's, it's, it's based on the transfer mark database. Right. And then you can basically clubs can just like filter it by names and players, etc. And I can't, the, the, you know, We've worked closely together with Bayer Leverkusen and Werder Bremen to create this tour in the first place, right? Um, so two very big name professional teams that we've worked with together. And I can tell you that there is at least one massive Premier League team that may or may not have won the Champions League in recent years that might be involved, right? And there is a very big Bundesliga club involved as well. And there's various other teams around the world. And I can tell you that all the Spanish teams use it, you know, um so they are all in that database working every day anyways so mm -hmm. yeah of course why wouldn't you use it and yeah. i don't understand why people think that this is this is unprofessional or not i mean there is a massive database out there for free i if think they, any company would use that if they use it is because it's been accurate for long enough that they yeah. trust it that's what it is essentially because yeah if i start a website right now and i put market values i might even be very accurate as much as transfermark or even more but people are not going to use it right away it takes years of building a reputation and them seeing that okay mm -hmm. they don't get everything perfect but it's pretty no. damn near enough that we can use and it we, and trust we it. make mistakes i had a discussion today on twitter with someone who said like oh you've been caught out faking statistics before and it's like that's a wild statement like mm -hmm. we may have made mistakes in our statistic again we have 970,000 players in our database and we missed four assists by Messi in friendly games in one year right I'm sorry but that's so not the, so you're really you're the type of account that goes on Twitter calling Messi Pessi I, I don't care about either Ronaldo or Messi um I find when it comes to assists, that's nitpicking. Um, there is there is certain data points that are not as important as others, you know, mm -hmm. and it is very difficult to keep up with every friendly that Argentina plays somewhere in, you know, they play so many friendlies all over the world and not all of them are even true competitive friendlies. And Brazil does the same, you know, this Filippo. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to keep up with that sometimes because again, we do everything by hand. Someone has to put that data point in and not everyone is going to watch Argentina against Cameroon played somewhere in Qatar. Right? Yeah. So yes, things get missed and it's not done on purpose. Now, last but not least, I think we clarified most of it, how transfer mark works, mm. which nowadays it's the most reliable for market value and database for players. I do use it quite a bit here in the channel as well when I need data, especially for Americans and, and information mm -hmm. and transfer market and transfer fees. The last thing I want to talk about very briefly is I've seen not just you, but other accounts mention how market values are used to predict future outcomes of leagues or games. Yeah. Now, just a disclaimer here. It's obvious that just because a club or a national team has higher market value it doesn't mean they're going to win what what i'm trying to say is it's been used quite a bit for large samples right if you get mm -hmm. 20 tournaments and you use market values to predict you're probably going to get more right than wrong um can you talk about that real quick yeah i forgot the name of the the guy that's Stefan Szymanski. Stefan, Szymanski. Stefan Szymanski for he wrote the book Soconomics and um, there's a really good article of Jonathan Tannenwald in the Philadelphia Inquiry where he where he said he used he basically beat um, the Vegas betting odds by using 
Transfermarkt as his base to determine outcomes, right? And what he said is simple. When you look at all the major European leagues, Champions League, um, the team with the higher market value <laughs> tends to be the one that wins. The factors that he includes, but that's his number one factor for that. What's really interesting, though, uh, in MLS, he said the model is more complicated because the market values are much closer or squad values in the sense, right? Because uh, of the salary cap. And he found that although the market values a, are the biggest, or one of the biggest factors, it's not the biggest factor in MLS, which is very different to other leagues. It's actually home advantage, mm. which makes sense. Travel, right? And if you have two teams who are very close in squad in squad value anyways, because we're talking about differences between everything between the top and the bottom team right now. And this is this is um, a big disclaimer on that as well. We're so early in the season, we don't know yet what the squads will look like, right? MLS has a, MLS teams have a lot of flux. So um, you might see Inter Miami at $22 million um, dollars squad value at the moment. They might just sign a couple South Americans and all of a sudden they're in the very top, which actually also kind of shows you how difficult it is in MLS because one or two players in every squad might make up half the squad value in MLS. You don't have that in Europe the same way than you have in, in MLS. Um, so he said like in MLS, because of that, the squad values are this, uh, a second factor behind home advantage. And you and I, we both live in North America. We're both on the same continent at the moment. You're in Texas, it's warm. I, I'm in Canada and it's a warm, warmish day today at 90 degrees Celsius. And, you know, and, and any given day, the Whitecaps might play in Colorado at minus 30, right? And then yeah. go down to Houston and it's plus 20 there. And we have had occasions where that happened, right? So home advantage is a massive factor. But yes, by and large, anywhere else in the world, um, squad values determine outcomes. And again, our, our, not all of the market values might be 100% accurate, but when you take a squad of 23 players, it evens out. The average squad market value in the squad becomes a pretty good determination of how good a team is. Got it. Right. I, I I personally never use that to predict any game or anything. I'm more of a guy that watches the game and does my yeah. own eye test, my judgment. Um, I usually get more right than wrong, but obviously get I never use that. But I can also confirm that, for example, in South America, uh, ever since Common Ball started to Argentina went through a currency crisis, so mm -hmm. their squad market values dropped. The clubs ha start to have less money. Ever since Brazil opened up the gap financially became a yeah. much richer league than the other ones brazil has completely dominated the south american competitions winning the last three libertadores being the last two were just brazilians four brazilians in the final not just that you also put up the copa sudamericana brazil yeah. dominating and there is a relationship there as the market value for brazilians increased and the other ones decreased we noticed that gap quite a bit and and yeah. it, it kind of sucks because South American soccer used to be so competitive. And right now, the gap between Brazil and the other clubs is kind of big. You see it in Europe too, right? I mean, when you look at Bayern Munich, for example, in the Bundesliga, they have a, a squad value of almost 900 million euros. And then you have Dortmund as next biggest with around 560 to 600 million euros. And the point gap is accordingly. You look at the Premier League, you know, uh, City is like over a billion euros because they spent like a, a small GDP of a country on defenders alone and yeah that they, they win you know it's in the end of the day money scores goals or in the city's case prevents them <laughs> which yeah, is all no. you, you know what i mean and and um it's an unfortunate reality of our game today that um it, when, with the exception of mls resources are not equally distributed and um our market values reflect that and while they're not always accurate, when you, again, when you take the sum of, 20, when you take 25, 26 market values individually and put them all together, and then you average them out, our average is probably correct, right? Because some will be too high, some will be too low, and a lot will be pretty accurate. And the average will be average. closer to the actual number for sure. Yeah, hundred percent, right? And this is why we always, when we look in our, when you go to MLS, you see the squat values on the right. And then in the middle, we have a little column where you can see average squad uh, play market value for the player and 
you know, the Whitecaps, for example, are in the top four or five right now in terms of squad value in MLS, but their squad is put together. They're, they're ready to play tomorrow, right? Because they made a lot of deals last season with an eye to this season. So when, when you then actually average out the squad value, they're still, in the, I think, in the top 10, but they drop significantly because they have all the 30 players in a contract, mm-hmm. right? So I actually think that I actually always find the average market value of players is, is a far more telling statistic of our team's strength than the overall squad value because it doesn't the overall squad value is a, it's a neat little statistic too and yeah we make graphics about it and that sort of things uh, for social media engagement but it's again i find actually the average market value of a team is is far more interesting all right that's pretty much everything we wanted to co- cover here and anyone watching this video if you have any specific questions i know i did put questions also mm-hmm. in the youtube community tab and if it's not and it's not in this video i do apologize because manual has a limited time i do as well and as you can see we're over 30 minutes here uh put any comments down below uh yeah. depending on what it is me and manual can address on the podcast as well because we have much yes. more time there so put it down below go check out our podcast on sackable manual thank you very and much once again just maybe one thing to add um you can get involved it's free to sign up if you don't like our data get involved and help fix it it's Mm -hmm. that simple um it's i think i know it's very easy to complain on twitter um but we actually welcome anyone who wants to help um that's actually the basis of our of our site so, but one yeah. thing, one thing to add, you can't go and complain and say, I think this player should be 20 million because I think it is. Try to use some examples, right? Okay, yeah. this guy is playing a similar leave, sim- similar production. The team's about the same. Can't, try to have an argument for it rather than just saying, hey, you're biased and I think he's worth twice yeah. of what you put. Try to have an argument. That's all. Yeah, I think that's very important. And that's why our forum exists, you know, where we discuss these things. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button before you go if you enjoyed this type of content. If you want manual back too. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys.